Hey, everybody, let's go. Crazy Dave from this place, Flights 2. Uh, coming today from uh, the workbench and gonna talk about some stuff. Uh, I'm gonna make some room here first, so uh, yeah. This can go over here, and then uh, this can go over here. Ah, let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, just like everybody else does with their workbenches, right? Um, yeah, not so much. Usually it's much cleaner, but today, today I'm just, eh, I'm feeling lazy. Let's talk about things normally people don't get to see. Like, here's a BF-109 plane from Volantex RC. Absolutely love this plane. Comes ready to fly out of the box. It's a 400 scale flyer. It looks a lot like that. And in such, this is a nifty little EPP foam flyer. Nice quality. It's got ailerons. Battery goes down in here in a compartment. It's got wheels that you can put on or off and fly with or without them in there. You just, these just pop right out. You can fly with or without wings and wheels. Well, you kind of need the wings, but you know what I'm saying. You can take the wheels off the wing. And you can pop right back in. There's a clip that goes in there, like that, and I go right back in. It's got a tail dragger wheel, full tail and elevator, servos inside of it. Clear canopy on this version. There are some that do not have a clear canopy. It just has uh, the foam built into it. Um, two optional blades here. you got a three-blade prop and you have a two-blade prop. I personally like flying with a two-blade. I find it has a little more torque to it. The three-blade is a tiny bit smaller, yet still very, very scale flying. And the beautiful thing about this fact that it comes RTF with a 2.4 gigahertz radio and it's got this little aerobatics button here so you power it up power it down power it up boom 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 start it up three modes all the way forward it's beginner middle is moderate and in the end let's get crazy 120 percent full throw on the ailerons and all the servos are very fast uh, the throttle, you can just full throttle it, and it is a rocket ship in the air. I like to fly it in the middle position. It gets you full motion of the ailerons and the elevators. You can one button push and go left or right, and it will barrel roll. You can one button push, pull back, or push forward on it, and it will do an aerobatic thing all by itself and fly around. This also has a home button. There's a function here where you can hold down on the trim, start it up, let go of it, once it's initialized, it will GPS recenter itself and fly back to where you are. It will not land itself, but it will actually come back home. Home, as they say. And uh, you can throttle down at that point and land it in the grass, or you can try to catch out of midair. It is a very docile plane and fairly easy to fly. However, like all things, Gravity is a mean mistress, and they um, will catch you when you're sleeping, or if uh, a little happens via like a dog or a gust of wind comes by and distracts you. Well, you can stick it in the dirt, and we had one of these that a customer was flying on their maiden flight, and I felt bad because uh, they they literally were at the baseball field and they stuffed it nose first right into all the dirt, and they got some dirt or some rocks or something stuck up in this, and this thing spins very smoothly on this one as it should and i've personally had four uh, uh four and four and a half flights on this one um i cut one short because the wind was picking up but uh decent 12 minute flight time on the battery on the stock battery you can push them a little bit longer depending on how fast you're flying with the throttle uh gyro stabilization so if you wiggle your wings like this on it these flaps will uh, automatically adjust and if it's flying in the wind and the wind's kind of bobbling it around it will adjust it and you won't even notice that it's flying in the wind that's how awesome these little birds are from Volantex. And with all good things comes parts and pieces and taken apart. I can't find any stuff on the internet anywhere as it talks about all the different pieces and parts to this plane and how it goes together and what's in it. So I figured today, why not discuss the parts and pieces of these beautiful little planes. I have already disassembled this one. This comes very, very easily uh, taken apart. The glue that they use from the factory is a rubberized cement, so it's tacky, but it also does have elasticity to it, so it will peel apart very easily. 
The plane has main parts here where the bottom is up in here this way. Okay, This is all glued together already from the factory, so you don't have to worry about any of that. The tail is already on it from the factory. Okay, as you saw that, it comes ready to fly. To take it apart though, a little tricky. So, up inside your nose here, you have your little gearbox unit and your motor. This one, because we stuffed it in the dirt, it has a bent main shaft. It kind of does a little, little bend here on it. And that's why we cannot get it to rotate around properly. So I wanted to see if that's what the actual problem was, uh, if this was repairable, if there was a tooth missing in one of the gears here, and decided, you know, I'm going to take this apart. So the first thing you're going to find is under the nose of the plane, right under the nose of the plane here, you have this compartment right here. This little piece pops out. It's got a tab on the back right here where the battery patch compartment is, and this is sloped. If you see here from the front, it's got a little slope to it, so it kind of goes in this way and latches in. You can pop it from the back side just by putting a screwdriver down in here and wiggling it around. This is this is not in here super, super tight. You can see where the cut lines and the mold lines are still here just underneath the paint and where the rubber cement was. You can pop this out, and that gives you access into the motor compartment area under the wing. Now I'm going to remove this so you can see what it goes. It's in this block and the gear here is up in the nose. Now, I had to split this from the bottom, but this is actually up in the nose. And it slides forward all the way out here. That's upside down. See? Ah, I'm doing it wrong. Alright, here we go. So the gears this way go in this way, face down, up into the nose, like that. Alright, and this will close over on it. And there's two screws that are here that hold down the motor bracket. You take these out and this little black piece comes off and the motor is exposed. And you can actually, again, split this and pull the entire unit out. Yay, battery's done! You can pop this out this way. It's just glued in. The screws actually don't go down into the frame. It just goes down into the frame of this. So if you need to take the motor out for repairs, you don't have to take this whole thing out. You can unscrew this and this, and then with a pair of pliers, you can grip this motor here in the plane and pull it straight out the back, because the gears that are here will allow the slide. You can also just loosen it up a little bit, but it's got a catch on the back side here, so you can't just loosen the bracket. You have to take the whole bracket off. So even though these screws are backed out, you can take this whole thing off, and then this piece will pop out. And don't lose these screws. If you have a magnetized screwdriver, you're far better off using that. So this little black piece here, this will pop off. Boom. There's your little black piece that pops off. Your motor now is exposed, and in the plane, when it's up in the nose, you'll have that silver, you'll have that silver bit that you can grab onto. And this is glued in, so you don't have to worry about yanking it too hard, because the gear that's in here goes right down on the front there, grab it a hold, you just wiggle it and pull straight back, and the motor comes right out. Now, this is attached to the CPU unit that is on the fly bar here. This will be plugged into um, the spot right here where the motor goes in. You'll see where that is. I disconnected that first. That way if you do accidentally pull a little too hard on it or if the motor jumps, you're not going to tear that out of your circuit board or accidentally break the wires off your motor. So I do disconnect that first. When we got the motor out, we found out there was indeed something in here that was hanging up and getting jammed. So the motor is the issue, as well as the uh, drive shaft on the prop is bent. So this will get replaced, and the gearbox shaft on here is really nicely done. It's, it's not a throwaway thing, because there is a C-clip on the back side of this that can be popped off. And in such, you can slide this whole gear out and then off the front and replace this drive shaft on here, which is really thoughtful. I believe also from Volantex you can order the entire unit, as you can see. There's definitely a uh, warp here, and you can feel as I'm turning as it gets stiff right about right there, and it is warped. Sorry in advance if this is not very clear. I'm trying to find the spot in this camera where it likes to be, and I don't know where it is, maybe here. Um, but it's it's got a, a definite knock to it where the shaft is bent. So. That will be the cause of 
stuffing it into the ground. So I decided at that point to continue onward and start taking the rest of this apart. So inside here, once you take the bottom of the wings off, and they just they just are in here like this. This is up into your battery compartment in the front. Your wings are here. Along here, in this, you peel along this line, right around the front and the back here. It'll just peel itself up that way and come off. This servo here, which handles your ailerons, you see there's two control rods here, that will be attached to your motherboard right over in the corner here. Disconnect that and your bottom wing comes off. There's a little bit of glue also along this access hatch here, so just be aware that pop it there. Don't pop it back in this area. Run an X-Acto blade around the edges here, up underneath the nose. It facilitates getting the motor out way easier than it is just trying to slide it out with all that stuff in there. So that's what I removed that wing so I could get the motor out. It was much easier. This wing as is, all good, leaving the servo in there. The adjustments of the ailerons don't need to be done. So if I have another plane, this will be ready to go just like that. If not, you can unscrew the servo and swap them out very easily. The ailerons are already installed part of the foam as part of the factory. There's no actual uh, adjustments to them other than the guide wires have that piano bend in them and you can adjust them left and right from there. The circuit board has four screws, one, two, three, four here. I backed those out and there are push rods that are attached to these servos. Unscrew the servo horn and then the little J bend or the uh, L bend that's in here. Oh, what the heck bend is? I don't, even know what, I don't even know what bend you call it. Is it an S bend or a J bend? You can see there, got a little bit of a S shape to it. Those are up into the servo horns. You just gently roll them off the servo horn and then you can put them back onto the servos and four screws, one, two, three, four. Slide those rods back and then you can pull out the circuit board. Push rods will slide out the back here very easily. You just wiggle it, turn it. Comes right out the back of the plane from. I make a liar. There it goes. So there's one side. Here's the other side. Again, they are both different. So don't be confused as to which one's which. The tail and the elevator have different lengths of the rod. You can see it here in this video. Sorry again. Uh, there is a difference in the bend length on them. The longer one is on the left side of the plane and that one will go to, on the back of the tail here, your elevator, which is this right here. This tail also is glued on here. There's a seam line under the bottom here and along the bottom of the tail. This top part is attached. Do not cut on the top part. You want to come across the bottom and around the other side and there's a stiff support that you rock it back this way like this and pull it backwards. There's plastic in here that is mounted up into the tail and again the rubber glue there's a little notch back here where this tail fits down in there nicely and this whole unit is by itself. Made this way from the factory it's already got the hinge pieces in here as part of the foam. It's got your two attachment points. As you can see, the quality check passed on this one, and it's a nice unit. It even has a carbon fiber spar right through it for support. Not sure if the tail has one up jammed through it. I don't think it does because it feels kind of soft and spongy. Uh, it doesn't really need one. The rest of the body fuselage, though, I started splitting a little bit here just to check, and there is a carbon fiber spar in the back running to the, you can see it in there, running down the, the length of the fuselage, which is really nice. And there's a plastic piece in here where that chipboard does attach to, and I'm not sure or not, I, I don't believe so. There's a little notch here where you can slide a cardboard pilot profile head into the cockpit. This one does not have that, uh, and this cockpit piece is clear, obviously, again, where they uh, used to have another version of it, which is all styrofoam a cheaper version of this plane without the gyroscope in it. Uh, there's a big difference, so if you go on any of those cheapo depot discount jank websites where they have 
some of these airplanes on there and they're like 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 bucks, be aware they're not all the same thing. They may look the same, but they're not all going to come with extra batteries and propellers and a charger. You might get one battery as opposed to like these actually come with two or three. You're going to get one prop as opposed to multiple replacement ones right out of the box. And a much better controller uh, with the, uh, the, the GPS locator on it. Graphics on these are very good. Again, a fuselage if you need to, just splits. You can re-glue that very easily by putting it back in there. It's got an air hole here for cooling from when the fan blows through the motor all the way up through to keep your electronics nice and frosty when flying, so don't want to worry about overheating. That's basically the fuselage and the tail and the wings broken down out of this. I didn't have any issues with them. The glue from the factory on this is amazing. It basically was very tacky. It came off and was not really super difficult. However, I just didn't want to force it. And the foam stayed together and the glue gave up. The, tinsel, the tensile strength on it was just enough so that you could pry things apart. I didn't have to use a razor blade other than one little spot just to start it to get it to start to split. I didn't have to go across the top of the canopy or anywhere on that. I was very happy with how this actually came apart. So, full parts are available on these here. There's a whole chipboard if you need to. I believe you can unscrew... Yes, you can unscrew. There's two little screws here. You can unscrew the servos if you need to. Um, gears are replaceable in here. These are little. These are real. These are real servos. These aren't. These aren't. These aren't those fake things. No, it's actually a legit servo. Um, All-in-one receiver, speed control, um, GPS. All the electronics are in here. It's an amazing little piece of hardware kit that they have in this. I was very very impressed with how much technology has changed even in the past five or six years uh, with micro scale stuff and these birds honestly worth every penny especially since the fact that you can repair them and you can fix them maybe not so much like if the speed control goes or something burns out but there is a whole chipboard here that you can get and if need be you can come in and replace it if you have something else you want to fly with them the radio is bound to it 2.4 gigahertz you can use these also on the other airplanes, I believe a lot of these transfer over into their two-channel airplanes. So it's the same motherboard, just different fuselages, same radio, and just depends on what they plug into where on the chipboard. Obviously, you're going to have the motor, and you're going to have your tail and elevator. And if you have ailerons, cool. If not, then so be it. I'm impressed. Uh, for a little plane to come apart and just a few amount of pieces... Um, little gearbox on here, very straightforward, easy to work on. I give them a 9 out of 10. Peace!